Hello, everybody. Our presentation agenda. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of marketing, and I'm not going to bore you with a 101 where we go across the decades. We are going to go across the decades, but it's going to be short, and I think you'll find it uh, illuminating as to understand just where we're at, why publish and thrive fit into a larger narrative of the progression of history through marketing. Kind of cool. I think you'll like it. Then we'll talk about how to optimize online directories. If you're saying, what's online directories? We'll talk about what those are, how to make the best of them for your business. Talk about building a reputation online, which is important, unless you're building a bad one, in which case you should stop. And I know many businesses that have built bad reputations, and I'll talk about some of those from my old hometown, um, and uh, I hate them. But we'll talk about that later. And then we'll talk about how to keep customers. You can get them in the door, but that doesn't mean you can keep them. Just because they're in the door doesn't mean they're not trying to run out. So how do we actually keep customers with Zoho Thrive? But starting off very briefly, perhaps we've heard of newspapers. They were once popular, and now they're scorned. And um, no one really has any newspaper subscriptions, unless it's like online, people do that. But this is an oldie. The beginning of marketing started in some ways with cave paintings. We're not going to go that far back. We're just going to talk about Newspapers, briefly. Do we remember these? Um, you'll see an interesting headline, fall and winter suits have to be sacrificed. I'm saying this all the time, and it's good to see that it's uh, been like, codified in history here. You'll see the price of suits, right? This is The point is, this is just how you would advertise at some point. You'd get full-page sales where you'd write weird copy. Oh, what a crowd, and you could write stuff like that. Very classic. This is how things started in terms of big media advertising. From there, we moved on to billboards. You'll recognize um, the logo of the sweet Coca-Cola. Maybe less so the Abso Fresh Cakes. Uh, I don't know what those are. Um, Abso Fresh, no fooling, they're good. Sounds like an asbestos cake. Uh, that doesn't sound that good. Maybe that's why we don't know what they are. But billboards came around, very popular, still see them today. Um, do they work? Who can say? You'll oftentimes see billboards that say on the billboard, do these work? They just did. It's like they're trying to sell you on the fact that they're still relevant. Kind of interesting. And then television, uh, the wretched TV came along in the 60s along with the wretched McDonald's, who still has me in their grasp to this day. Popular for advertising. And then, of course, this whole time, unspoken, you have the yellow book. When I was young, we would say, I actually remember using a yellow book. I'm not that young, I guess I would say. Because I remember the yellow book, and, the, and it still shows up today. Fortunately, it's on its way out. 2007, rest in peace. 2.24 billion sale of Yellow Pages directories business to a private equity consortium. This is shocking because truly you can make money doing anything. If in 2007 you can make billions on Yellow Pages. And then two, private equity consortium. I just like that phrase. It just makes me feel good. You know what I mean? Does it make you feel good? Kind of a friendly sort of setup. But maybe they're not gone. We'll talk more about this wretched thing later. So that's kind of how things went. People would use these for in the business software parlance lead acquisition, right? You'd get them through newspapers, through billboards, TV ads. There's a bunch of other ways people would get them, but these were kind of the big moments. But now we're in the digital era. Things like Google Maps, Apple Maps, Yelp. In fact, some of you may have even come here, and if you're new to Austin or just the area in general, you might, I know me personally, I always just go on Google, and I'm like, okay, what's the good restaurant near me, right? This is how I find places, and how I decide where I want to go, well, we'll get into that. Not hard to uh, imagine this. I imagine many of you probably do this, right? Look on your phone, food near me, restaurant near me. Right, very popular in the US, France, Germany, they're just like us. They look for business info. So this is an example of what you would get, not on your phone, but on your desktop. We've all seen this. This is a search I did, Nashville hot chicken near me, which is a common search that I do. I did this home, I live in Sacramento, and it gave me a few different places. And we're gonna talk about why and how this is distributed like this, because if I put a Nashville hot chicken near me, it's not pulling up random places, right? It's not even pulling up just Nashville hot chicken places. It's using things that I put in the search bar, these local places here, okay? So we're gonna talk about how that's chosen, how that's parsed, but just to get you on the same page, this is the kind of thing we're talking about. 
in these Google business profiles. And the way that these are served to me is through things, something called local SEO. Local SEO is a whole field. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but it is quite literally what it sounds like. It's search engine optimization tuned to give you a local search engine result, local SEO. So there are two big aspects of local SEO that you want to focus on when it comes to having your business show up online when people search food near me or plumber near me or IT near me, whatever it is, right? One, you want to make create, create locally relevant content. So if you have competitor businesses and you find that they tend to show up more in Google search results, you probably want to figure out why that is. What are the keywords they're putting in their listings that you're not using? You want to use those local keywords and you want to optimize your Google business profile. That's something we'll be focusing on a fair amount in this session because personally, I mean, I still use Google misgivings about the company aside. It's just the one that's everywhere. And so I tend to use it more than like a Bing. Uh, number two, get chosen. Many reviews. Obviously, you want a bunch of reviews. You want to be chosen. One of the main things I look at when I say food near me is how many reviews the place has. And just to be clear, they need to be positive, not negative. Uh, the proximity to my location. This cannot be especially controlled by you, right? Just have your business in a good spot. Don't have it out in some field far away. You know, you can't control this, but it is a important part of where you put the address for your business. And then using more of the platform. So this is something I'll return to time and again, and this sort of lays into that a little bit. So Google My Business, if you aren't aware, that's going to be your business profile on Google. And local SEO ex experts, and here's a little source, you can read this on your own, were asked, what are the things that get people to convert? So they see my Google My Business profile, someone searches food near me, and they see my business. What are the things that Google wants to have so that they push your business more? Number one is high Google ratings, high number of Google ratings. That's fairly straightforward, right? We know this intuit intuitively. If we see a lot of people reviewing something and interested in talking about it, we kind of trust it more. A positive sentiment in that review text. So Google does use sentiment analysis to determine this, whether they surface it to you or not, they are doing it. The quantity of native Google reviews with text. So again, a lot of reviews made on the platform itself. Proximity of address, like I mentioned. And then we start getting into the whole, uh, they like it when you use more of the platform stuff. They want the messaging feature enabled. They want proper hours set. And ideally you're managing this. They want the completeness of the listing, again, more of the platform. They want the bookings feature, so they like it when you use their stuff. Same thing with Google Posts and uh, owner seated facts, filling out the Q&A, this kind of stuff. They really, really want this stuff. And the more of this you have, the more of it you use, the more active, the more they kind of reward you by pushing your business. And obviously, if you have a bunch of reviews, reviews that are positive, that's going to naturally just push your business anyway, right? The whole point is building strong reputation is essential because without that, I'm not going to go to your hot chicken restaurant. So these online directories, Google My Business, um, Yelp, these things have to be optimized for, whether it's Google, Yelp, your Bing business listing, as one man can attest, Facebook, or the wretched yellow pages. That's right, folks. They have a website. You can go to it. You can even maybe find your business on it. This is a big point though, ensuring that your business name, address, and phone number are correct and consistent. You may think that, well, like this is obvious, you know, yeah, you have to do that. But for local SEO, that's a really important point. It's called NAP. If that's inconsistent, you get ranked much lower on these services. So make sure that these things are correct and consistent across all of these services. For example here, Nashville Hot Chicken Near Me, this is the same thing, but I wanna point out here, how important this is. So these are the organic results down here. This is a website. I don't know if you can see it. It says Dave's Hot Chicken. That's a hot chicken website that is doing good SEO. They're one of the first things that served. And I can tell you because I did this search at my house, Dave's Hot Chicken is not near my house. I'm not going to go to Dave's Hot Chicken. I can go to a different hot chicken place. It's far away. But notice what's above these organic results. Sure, they had good non-local SEO. They just had good Google search engine optimization, they weren't in this top pack up here, right? These are the places I'm going to be drawn to. So this is the thing you want to optimize for, even more than just having good website SEO. Local SEO is key here. You'll also notice if I look at my search, 
Nashville hot chicken near me. Notice it's highlighting here. Nashville hot chicken is Sacramento. Best Nashville chicken. This place has it in their title, Nashville hot chicken. Now, when I go to Angry Chicks, which is down the street from me, it does not say on the sign, Angry Chicks, Nashville Hot Chicken. It just says Angry Chicks, but they know we need to optimize for this local SEO. Let's put it in our listing. These people know, ideally, I mean, I don't know if they do this, but they should probably say, hey, leave us a review and please use this keyword because people tend to search this. We know it performs well. Use that keyword, we'll show up higher in search results. In fact, you can even see there are a lot of reviews for all of these are pretty similarly rated, but this one has way more reviews and is higher reviewed, but it doesn't even show up number one because they kind of did the keyword in the title thing, which is very important, right? So we see the power of actually optimizing for local SEO because I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna look at these before these. So Zoho Publish, this is the thing that's going to allow you to do that. Um, I have a friend that's starting a business and I earnestly recommended to him without being a shill. I was like, look, I honestly, I would use Zoho Publish to do the thing you're trying to do. And I'll show you why. The thing he's trying to do is start and manage a business with, that needs online listings and wants to be very online, right? So if I go over to Publish, all right, so here we are in Zoho Publish. This is the screen where you will manage brands. For example, there are local SEO agencies that manage brands. Sometimes, and this is something I learned about quite a lot while just making this session, there's whole like, hey, we will manage your total online identity for you, and that's what these agencies do. This is where they would have multiple brands that they're managing. Or in this case, I'm signed into an account that's managing uh, Church's Chicken. Are we familiar? I don't, this was a coincidence, all this chicken related so I just realized that. Um, we're managing Church of Chicken here, so they're using just cities. This is another way to break things up. So let's go to uh, Ontario here. So now we're looking at all the branches they have. So this is friendly for franchise franchising. All these places are going to have different listings on online directories, right? And we can see that. So if I click through to... Um, let's go... Let's go to Brampton. We see here are the online spots we're listed at, but we actually see one we have pending. We're not listed on Show Me Local. And just to set the stage, this is like Google Business Profile, Hot Frog, Brown Book, Yelp. That's these things that we're looking at, right? We're going to manage information across all of those from one source that's Zoho Publish. But we're not published on Show Me Local because we have a pending action. Now, Publish knows how important NAP is, and if any of it is off, it's going to say, hey, we're not even going to put your business up on the website until you have all of this sorted out, because without that, it's not going to perform. So we can see there's an invalid state. It's not going to let us put this up until we figure that out. So if I go back to businesses, and yeah, let's go back to, I was in Brampton, that's right. And I look at business info. So again, NAP, very important, right? all that information being consistent across spots. We can look at the name, we can look at the phone number here. As soon as I edit this, it's gonna push that across uh, online directories for me, so I don't have to edit it across Yelp and then Google and all these other places. It's gonna all be done here. Same with address, same with payment methods, all that stuff that you see, I'm quite familiar with Yelp, I use that frequently for whatever reason. I always say, okay, do they accept MasterCard because I have a corporate account and I, you know, I don't want to, you know, I just want to make sure I don't get there and then I have to do an, another expense report where I need to be reimbursed. Same thing with hours. Oh, get out of my way. Store time. You all, you can set special hours for holidays. This will vary from business to business, so we let you set those things up. And then about the business, uh, this is not a great about for this business. And it's also worth noting this is an actual business that I'm looking at the account of. This is a demo account, but it's actually being used for church's chicken locations. So this isn't very good. And this is a good example of what not to do, saying we are open and you're about. That's not really what's going on. So I can rephrase that or I can write a much more extensive, useful thing. In fact, let me go and show you one that isn't uh, doing buffoonery. So I can view this about, right? And this is a much better one. Let me expand this. But if I don't have a sense of what to write here, if I don't 
exactly know what keywords to use, I can use this little AI here to rephrase what's been written, and it will rephrase what is written, and it'll actually use keywords pulled from, see where this is located, a, uh, this is determined to be a fast food restaurant, I can set what it is, and it's gonna know what keywords to pull from that so that it performs better for local SEO. Insert those into your about, so you can write your about, rephrase it, adjust it as need be, but it knows and it's gonna put that stuff in there, which is pretty useful. So listings, I went over that already. Now I'm gonna to get to reviews. We talked about managing reputation. I know many businesses that are not very good at managing their reputation and their reviews are heinous. And they just let these horrible reviews sit on there and plummet their review score. Their quantity's going up, their quality's going down, and as a result, I never see them. So you can manage and respond to reviews all through Zoho Publish. So let's see. Uh, everything is slow as hell. The three people who work the day shift hate their jobs for sure. One star. So I don't know what to say to that. You know, I'm caught off guard. Yeah, they hate their job. Of course they do. But I'm a business owner. I don't want to admit that. I need to make this look good. So I'm going to say, hey, can you suggest a reply to me? And it's going to read what was written. And it's going to say, I apologize for the inconvenience. We value your feedback. We'll work on improving our service. Thank you for your patience. So it's reading what they wrote and responding in kind. And of course, to get away from this, I think this is a very good place to start. The next step, I think, would be to then refine it and make it a lot more personable, like you're an actual human being, right? Like this will read what they wrote, but I think it's always good to give them a next step. Like, hey, we're really sorry about that. Come in and show us this review and we'll give you a 10% off or whatever, right? But this is a really good place to start, especially if you're feeling kind of confused, like uh, this reviewer. <laughs> I'm at five stars, drifted off, pretty good. You even have stuff like this, which we know how to reply to. Five fire emojis, we reply, five happy emojis. It's kind of fun, it's cute. Computers have emotions too. So this is a very good place to be to respond to reviews, of course. Uh, yes, do not save that. We have an analytics section. You can see how people are finding you through a desktop map, desktop search, mobile. You know, depending on the type of business you run, they might find you through different means. Conversation, we don't have any conversations, but this is, are people talking to you through the DM feature on Google? As we know, using this, Google prefers if you use more of their business. It's not the most important, but it is important. Same thing with phone calls and website clicks. And again, we I'm saying Google because I've currently selected Google up here over the other options, right? If I had Yelp hooked up to this, then I would see Yelp-based information, et cetera, et cetera. A key one I wanna point out here is the keyword section. So how, many cust how customers search for your business? This is what people are using. So remember I mentioned the Nashville hot chicken earlier, they put it in their business title. This is gonna let me know what are some of the keywords that people are using to find me. I now probably want to seed my business description and other things with these words and recommend when people leave me reviews to use these very words, right? So getting up here, then this dashboard will give me an overall view of the business. So this is no longer just looking at that one franchise location. This is looking across my franchises. You can see that things are going well. I have a 4.2 rating. I have some pending actions in order to get all of them listed still. So I have some stuff to do, some things to work on. Overall ratings, missed responses for my reviews, average review response times 30 days. So um, if I'm to go back here though, so this is a very good way to get people in the door, right? Customize your local SEO, make sure it's performing, stay on top of reviews and build your reputation. But how do you keep them coming back? That's when we use something like Zoho Thrive. So Zoho Thrive is a loyalty and affiliate program where you can build out loyalty programs. You'll put this little widget on your website, similar to the sales IQ widget, right? And it won't it won't conflict because you can have one on one side, one on the other, or only on certain pages. However you want to set it up, People will join in your loyalty program through the widget, and you can set up different ways for them to earn points. So becoming a member automatically gets them points. Liking us on Facebook automatically gets them points. Referring a friend. Now, we don't really care if they make a purchase, which is a strange thing to do if you're setting this up. You should probably give them more points if they make a purchase, but it's up to you to decide how to do that. And then they can redeem these points. Again, right, task type. This is the task I'm setting up. This is the reward. You can limit things to certain tiers. 
say, okay, this is a gold tier action. And you can say, okay, once you get enough points, you can actually spend those points and we'll send you a coupon. We can send you points coupons or you can do it percentage based. You get 10% off, that kind of thing. And then the other side of that, again, you can look at all your customers too. So this is kind of useful. You can see which customers are, are loyalty participants. And those that aren't, you might want to consider adding them to like a Zoho campaign to send out and invite them to join your service. So you have an ongoing business as most of you do and you institute this kind of thing. Now, okay, great. I want to actually institute this, but no one's on my program. Add them to a list, send them an email, get it going, right? And then um, you can also see your biggest earners here. Maybe you want to treat them differently, add them to another custom list. You have a bunch of different ways you can use this information, as well as the affiliate program. An affiliate program's quite simple. It's, hey, send someone this link. If they buy through this link, you get a kickback, that kind of thing. You can manage those with Zoho Thrive as well. So I want to move through this quickly to give you this use case. So say you're using Zoho Publish and Thrive. How might you do this? You would say to this person, hey, you know, this person did the hard work already. They left you a good review. That's hard to get people to do that. They mentioned something specific, right? Maybe this is a keyword you gave them. It's hard to get them to do that kind of thing. You can say to them, thanks for your review. Next time you're craving the thing you mentioned, right? You're actually reading and responding literally to the thing they wrote, not just being a robot. Sign up for our chicken club, again, chicken membership on our website to get your next order 50% off. Sign up here, then link them to their, your website. They see the Thrive widget. They submit their review. And to do that, they would just take a screenshot of the review, throw it into the widget. Someone on your team would look at the review in Zoho Thrive and say, good review, give them points. And that's how you can keep people rolling, right? Getting them in with Thrive, responding to them, rewarding them for doing the thing that they're already doing, which is reviewing you. Or if they're not reviewing you, mentioning at checkout, if you're a brick and mortar store, for example, saying, hey, thanks for coming in, sign up to our loyalty program, you'll get points, 50% off, whatever. Whatever you can to get them in there, and then you can further build on that with lists and all kinds of things. So this fellow likes it, as evidenced by these words that I've put on the screen that I'm going to skip past. So thank you, everybody.